we've seen that when there is um, surplus sharing over prices in each transaction, um, the uh, price of the service is going to be the following. So, you know, we have a bargaining problem. We solve it with a surplus sharing solution. And so we saw that the price interaction IPI is just going to be one minus beta, where beta is the bargaining uh, power of the buyer, one plus tau x, where tau x is a matching wage, times p, the aggregate price. Uh, so now the question is, if that's the condition that's imposed in each transaction to show plus sharing, what's going to be the solution of our macro model once we, uh, you know, once we aggregate this? So now the key thing here to notice is that, um, you know, in our model there is no. Here we are looking at the case in which there is no heterogeneity. Uh, so we all transactions are the same. As we can see here, and so that means that pi is going to be equal to p. Um, for all i's, all right? And so as a result, the surplus sharing condition is going to boil down to something that actually doesn't directly involve the price. Uh, so surplus sharing is going to become one is equal to one minus beta one plus tau x. So which I get by just eliminated, eliminating p on both sides of our equation here and here. And so um, basically sur the surplus sharing is going to, you know, is going to require that market tightness is at a very specific level. So we can rewrite this as um, tau x is equal to one over one minus beta minus one. And so that's just going to be, um, Right, that's just going to be um, beta over one minus beta. And so basically what the surplus, you know, for the surplus sharing condition to be um, satisfied in each transaction, it has to be that the tightness X is equal to tau minus one. So the inverse of the function tau at beta over one minus beta. So basically, when we have surplus sharing, um, the tightness, you know, is going to depend on uh, very importantly. So it's, it's going to depend on the element that enters the matching wedge, so the matching function, um, the cost of matching, and that's of course the reason why it matters because the cost of matching tells you like what the value of a transaction to a buyer because a buyer can always buy the same good at the same price somewhere else but has to reincur that cost of buying so it's that's why the matching wedge shows up here because it's telling you like that it, it captures the surplus on the buyer side because otherwise the buyer has to reincur that matching wedge to get another unit of consumption somewhere so that's that's why tau is here and beta of course shows up here because that's the bargaining power between uh between the buyer and the seller uh, and so it's going to influence x so this is telling us uh, what the tightness uh, is going to be when we have surplus sharing. Now, of course, you know, what I, what I was after, uh, you know, I'd like to know, you know, we're trying to figure out like what are the price norms under different assumptions. So here we have assumption of surplus sharing. We saw what the individual price relative to the aggregate price. So now these two things are the same. Here I end up with a condition on tightness. Um, but here I don't see like what, what the price, what the aggregate price is going to be under surplus sharing. You know, it doesn't appear here, uh, which is a bit unsettling. But of course, what you have to remember is that it's still our same old micro uh, model of slack. Tightness is still determined by the, you know, by the intersection of supply and demand. 
aggregate demand, of course, depends on the aggregate price level. And so, in fact, what you have to do now is, is to realize that the tightness we have here is, in fact, a function of the aggregate price level through the supply equal demand equation. And so, what we can do from this is that we can back out the aggregate price level using AD is equal to AS, such that the tightness in our model is going to be given by uh, tau minus 1 beta over 1 minus beta. Um, and, uh, and through that, we'll basically, we'll basically be able to figure out the aggregate price level given by surplus sharing. Um, so how do we do that? So uh, we know that uh, x is given is defined by AD is equal to AS, so that aggregate demand at tightness and at a price level uh, is going to be equal to YS at X, all right? Um, and you can see here X, my tightness is pinned down by the bargaining power and the matching wage. Um, and so therefore, so, uh, Price P under surplus sharing is such that YD, when the tightness actually satisfies, so YD at T minus 1, beta 1 minus beta, P is equal to YS at T minus 1, beta 1 minus beta. All right, so, and you can see that this. Uh, you know, on the right-hand side is just a value. On the left-hand side, we just have a function of p that's strictly decreasing, and so we can see that there'll be a, you know, there'll be a unique, uh, there'll be a unique p that satisfies this condition. Uh, and that p, this is, you know, if, if you want that the, the the, the price, you know, it's a bargain, uh, aggregate bargain price. Once we have, you know, when uh, bargaining is resolved by uh, surplus sharing, uh, or if you want, if the aggregate um, surplus sharing price. You know. um, so we can give actually an expression for, uh, for that price P. So yd of xp, you remember that it's key epsilon 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1 times u over p. All right, so therefore yd of tau minus 1 beta 1 minus beta that's going to be uh, so that's going to be key epsilon all right then I have 1 plus tau x but x is tau minus 1 of beta over 1 minus beta so it's going to be 1 plus beta 1 minus beta that's to the power of epsilon minus 1 that's mu over p and so we can simplify even further that's key epsilon, and then the denominator have 1 plus beta uh, over 1 minus beta. That's just 1 over 1 minus beta, epsilon minus 1 mu over p. And so this simplifies even further if I bring 1 minus beta to the numerator, so of key epsilon, 1 minus beta, epsilon minus 1 mu over p. So you can see that actually our, the value of our aggregate demand when tightness uh, is such that surplus sharing satisfies actually super simple. Uh, uh, and you can see that aggregate demand depends on uh, directly on the price level. And so the price level is going to adjust so that we can get the tightness we want in equilibrium. Um, so now what about Ys uh, at tau minus 1 beta 1 minus beta? Well, it's just going to be f of tau minus 1 of beta 1 minus beta time k. Uh, and f, 
once we do the composition of f and tau minus one, um, there's no clear simplification, um, but we know, you know, what all of this depends on. So here, what we see is that the bargain price And now we can see immediately what it satisfies because I know that here I have y d tau minus one beta one minus beta p. I know that these two things have to be equal, right? I know that this aggregate demand has to be equal to this aggregate supply. P shows up only uh, in the aggregate demand, so I know that p is going to be equal to. Uh, so here I have this kind of complicated f of tau minus one of beta one minus beta, okay. Then I have k. Oh, well, I guess this is going to be in the denominator, let's see. So we are um, computing that price, that aggregate price. Um, right, and so in the numerator, we have key epsilon one minus beta epsilon minus one times mu, and all of this divided by this other term, right? Um, and so this is what the aggregate, the bargain price has to satisfy such that through demand and supply, the tightness is exactly at the level that allows the split of the surplus to satisfy surplus sharing. So at a fraction, beta of the surplus goes to the buyer, beta being the bargaining power of the buyer, and a fraction one minus beta to the seller. This we can actually, <coughs> uh, we can rewrite it just to isolate the different uh, factors at play. Uh, so the bargain price is going to satisfy. So the one end, you have key epsilon, which is um, a factor that ca that captures uh, the uh, that come from the these parameters come from the utility functions that captures the demand for services, and you can see the demand for services is higher, key epsilon is higher, the price will tend to be higher to bring tightness down at that level where it must be. So here we have a price that responds to demand. Then <clears throat> we have mu. Um, that's the end amount of real wealth. And again, when it's high, the price tends to be high, such that the real wealth mu over P is at the proper level to get the proper tightness. Um, then we have one over K. Um, so when you have more services, the price has to fall so that these services are absorbed um, and tightness is at the desired level. So these are all parameters that capture demand and supply. Uh, of course, aggregate demand parameter here, aggregate supply parameter here. More demand tend to lead to a higher bargain price, more supply tend to lead to a lower bargain price. And then we have a bunch, uh, then we have a second part to this that involves the bargaining power. Uh, which of course bargaining power change will change the level of the of the price. So we have one minus beta epsilon minus one over f tau minus one beta one minus beta. So these are all the all the basically a term that depends on uh, bargaining power. So how uh, how prices are set. So I think that's kind of a a good way to separate. So this is our, our price level. Um, so <clears throat> so this is the price level that comes out through um, surplus sharing as a way to um, to as a way to set prices, um, and so. You know, if you wanted to set a price norm that reflects your price sharing, you would have Pn is equal to this thing. Uh, so that would be the price norm that captures uh, your price sharing.
So if um, the norm is to share surplus in transaction, everybody would expect the price to be given by this, uh, by this quantity, which depends on parameters uh, of the model. And, um, and then so the price in each transaction would be this. Um, tightness would satisfy, uh, tightness would satisfy the condition we have here. Um, this is tightness under surplus sharing. So tightness will satisfy this. Uh, and uh, right, and so and the buyer would get a share uh, beta of the surplus and seller a share one minus beta of the surplus. Um, 